Hey everyone, and welcome back. It is engine teardown frenzy time again. We've actually got, I think in this batch, uh, between here, I believe it's 14 or 15 engines, and it's a mix of all sorts of year models and all sorts of mileage, all sorts of formats. There's some 110s like this one, so in several different twin cams and also M8s. each one with its own unique failure. So uh, we're gonna start with this one. And if you haven't, and you're interested in this and you wanna follow my diagnosis along the way, I'm gonna start a playlist for this entire series. And this is gonna be a frenzy. I may be uploading a video every single night. So if you wanna hit subscribe and then be sure to hit that reminder bell, uh, that way when I post these videos, you can keep up to speed. So I'm just gonna let them run. And uh, so, the story on this engine, uh, it's a, it came out of a 2015 CVO. It is a waterhead model, and it belongs to Richard out of Ohio. All I know about this engine is that it chewed up a lifter, and uh, lifter came apart, and it had gotten partially dis disassembled. I, I think the cam chest was opened up. There are no uh, lifters in here. And so it had been partially disassembled, other, and we also know there was an excessive amount of crank run out. I don't know what we're going to find on the inside. I don't know how much damage was done. Uh, let's see what can happen. Now, I, I have had engines that have eaten lifters before, and it was absolute carnal <laughs> destruction on the inside. Uh, I've torn others down that you could barely see that anything had happened. It's just a matter of disassembling everything and cleaning things up. But... Okay, we've got, uh, we've got no rockers in here. So that must be in the box of parts that came along with it. You know, I get a lot of people comment on this table, me having to reach. I don't build engines on this table. This is a teardown table. It's tapered, it's got a drain in the bottom. Uh, it's actually a very heavy duty table rated at about a thousand pounds, give or take, and it's got a drain in the bottom of it and stuff. So the little bit of reaching that I have to do during these teardowns is not a big deal. You guys, of course, have seen my engine build stands uh, that I use from gyms on the tables that are only two feet tall. And then I can actually sit in front of them and it's a perfect working height on those. But uh, with this, I like my old teardown table. Um, and I've had several, several others ask where it came from um, it's actually made by handy handy industries same people that make some of the lifts that i have i do have uh you, you can get them other places i think uh northern has them and a few other places like that but uh i don't think they have the same weight capacity that this one does <coughs> So I'm not sure exactly how far this engine was partially disassembled before it got put back together and brought to us. It may have been completely uh, uh, completely disassembled because none of the gaskets are sticking or anything like that. So I think uh, this thing was disassembled more than, than uh, just the cam, the cam chest potentially. So, uh, so far, I uh, don't see anything, but it, I'm also looking at the rocker bases too. They look they look too clean, all right? Uh, they're actually really clean, uh, and there's well, there's no oil in them. So this this stuff's obviously been it has been taken off and cleaned previously, and yes, of course it has because we have some plugs that are in the head here uh, to block off the holes. So someone's been down to it this far, and. Uh, there was just a point that it got to that they stopped, and I'm, I'm not exactly sure what that reason is at this point. But we're going to find out here shortly. And some of you may have never seen these before. They kind of became started becoming standard equipment, I think, on the 08 police models on the 103. May have been a little later than that, but uh, then kind of from that point on, it got adopted into all models. And uh, 
There are two different designs of these and all it is is an electrical solenoid that's activated while you're cranking. Since we're going to be doing everything to this, I'm obviously going to be stripping everything. We're going to be pulling. You know, we've got a ton of machine work to do on the case since it's going to be a 117. So uh, I'll be stripping, uh, you know, stripping all the sensors and all that type of stuff off, is too, off of it too. And it being a water head, uh, I'll also be taking the fittings, water fittings out of the head. One good sign, I'm not, again, I, I don't know exactly how much this engine was tore down, but I'm not smelling a very burnt oil smell that you guys have heard me comment on before. Uh, you know, some of them, you know, when you pull it, it's the oil in it is just absolutely rancid. And I'm not really smelling that, so that's a, that's a good, good sign. see the intake we actually we don't have a tremendous amount of oil in the intake either I mean I would expect I would expect to see some all engines missed a little bit of oil but uh, it's not you know completely caked in there and covered up so that's a good sign Now the plugs are going to tell us how well it was running and maybe a clue as to what we might find on the inside. He's running stock 6R12s, which that or an Autolite equivalent is perfectly fine. And uh, all right, plugs actually don't look too bad at all. Uh, there's not a tremendous amount of oil fouling or anything like that on them. Uh, the gap looks about right. Uh, center porcelain looks good. It's bright white. I, See a couple little specks, maybe had a little bit of a det detonation, but nothing, nothing too bad. Actually, looks pretty good. Another interesting thing too, whoever was maintaining this bike, uh, they're a little clue sometimes as to, you know, just attention to detail and stuff. And there's actually dielectric grease here on the spark plugs, and that's a, that's a good sign and a compliment to whoever whoever put the plugs in, and did the maintenance on that. That's nice to see. <laughs> So I'll give you guys a little tid a little tidbit of information here. When you're using stainless fasteners, I think I've mentioned this before. Uh, yeah. When you're using stainless fasteners, uh, you really don't want to use Loctite. Uh, ARP actually has a a uh, anesthesia compound that you want to use. Now, sometimes, uh, and the purpose of that is so you get one a proper torque setting, and the other reason is so the stainless doesn't gall the aluminum. You know, when you're torquing it down. So. Uh, what that can mean is, you know, after you do your, you know, 500 miles or you do a few heat cycles and things like that, you may have to uh, tighten the fasteners back down. So, yeah, I think, uh, yeah, someone's certainly been in here. Uh, yeah, we got some oil out of it, but uh, I, I think wherever it was before, they had opened it up, inspected, and found everything. and. Maybe even went as far as cleaning some stuff out because uh, all this stuff just looks way, 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 way too clean. And but what I do have is down here in the bottom, uh, I've got some metal, small pieces. But yeah, I think someone's been here and been in here and uh, cleaned a lot of this out.
All right, let's see what we got. There's some there's some carbon build up here, but it's not, you know, all, all engines are gonna build up some car carbon, so you can't let that let that freak you out. You know, that's not a necessarily an indication of a major, major issue, as long as it's not too much. And there's a little bit on there, but uh, it's, uh, it's not a ton, not a ton, not too bad. Okay, now the, uh, the rear tells a very different story. All right, see a lot of this white that's in here. Uh, that's a pretty good indication of oil migration coming from the top end, like uh, potentially valve stem seal or something like that. Uh, this, this one is actually, this rear one is actually quite a bit worse than the front one. Um, this one would have some cause for concern. <laughs> Not terrible. Uh, typical, you know, wear marks, no grooves. The cross hatch looks halfway decent. Um, yeah, the cylinders don't look too terrible. Uh, piston skirt, not too bad. There is a, if you look along this area right here, and I can actually see where the piston is rounded off quite a bit. Um, see around in here, uh, where it's kind of been digging in. And uh, the ring pack doesn't look damaged, but what this is an indication of, you know, this is the thrust side of the piston. And it's this side of the piston that gets actually quite a bit of load. Typically, if you got, say, a dead, a dead lifter, you know, you crank it up, it can take, you know, it, typically they should pump up relatively quick. The piston slap is a little unique in that when you crank it up cold, you'll typically hear, you'll hear the tapping noise. And then very slowly, at about the same rate engine, cre and engine temperature is increasing, then you'll also hear the noise get quieter. And a lot of times when it gets to normal temperature, then, you know, if it's not too bad, then the noise goes away. And that's a good indication of that. And what you typically see is, uh, a lot of excessive wear, it's not on that side, on this side of the piston. And basically what's happening is, being this is the thrust face, as the piston's coming up, it's getting shoved this way, and when it turns over center, it comes back this way. So it's it kind of flops around like that and makes a bit of a noise. This by no means is the worst one that I've ever seen. Uh, but I think when we measure the cylinder, we're probably gonna find some taper in it. No, not terrible. Still has a nice cross hatch to it. It's not really glazed over. So kind of what I'm seeing, guys, is, is to a large degree, this the bike was tuned pretty well, whoever did the tuning on it before. Uh, and it did a, did a pretty good job. I don't, I don't smell a raw, a raw fuel smell to the oil necessarily, and we saw what one of the plugs looked like. I can't explain the other one. They may have, uh, you know, put a plug in that one, uh, but it looks like a brand new plug, but it's tarnished, so it's kind of strange. But when we see that uh, that on the rear plug and then we see the excessive carbon that's back there uh, it's kind of a head scratcher but i'll probably call richard and and talk to him about that and see see what we've got going on hmm. first pen's a little dark uh, indicating heat but that's again not a not a massive, massive thing. Wrist pin fits, not too bad. That's the coolest tool. <laughs> Something else from Jim's.
All right. Well, we definitely had uh, definitely had some something, um, which I'm going to split this case for you guys and let let you see it pour out. They uh, we would have had a lot more in there. Obviously, someone had already taken taken the gear case apart and drained most of that out. But you know, we've got quite a bit uh, on the on the crank, certainly bathed in oil. Well, there we go, right there. Can you see in there? The rod's just locked up. So we, uh, oh, that's a tight spot right there too. So we, yep, right there. So. All rods should have a little bit of play to them. All right. Um, one of the problems when you, when you have a crank issue or something like that, you know, you can't really visually inspect it. So you kind of have to work off experience and, and the feel if you will and typically what will happen you know is like a rear rod should be have a slight amount of movement to it just a slight amount and the front rod should have twice as much <laughs> if that makes sense but that's a real rudimentary way of looking at it but uh, they should have some side to side movement and you can see on this one it's tight and then on this side as well uh, we have no movement whatsoever and you can feel that there's drag on the rod so it's just tight all the way around, right? Way tighter than it should be. Yeah, see like here, uh, it locks up on us again. And just really, really tight. So that, and then it gets even, yeah, it gets even tighter, you know, tighter right there. So some of his knock could have been the crank bearing on the way out too. Um, and there we have again, and actually when you look down in there, the entire, you can probably see here, the entire crank's moving so there's no question we have a crank issue here as well so uh let's check run out and see what we've got yeah there we go so we have five thou run out but the run out obviously is not the problem here uh, uh you know five is is obviously not ideal but uh um it's not terrible either uh the problem is in the is in the crank bearing here and it just being being too tight there Ooh, that's not a good sound. That's why I do it by hand before I grab the impact. And these are very, very small screws, uh, so they're easy to snap. Let's uh, take it easy with it back and forth a little and let's hope that doesn't okay perfect there we go Whew. close call bearing spun or something because even the front half won't come off i'm trying to walk it off slow i see but uh it's stuck yeah we had one the other day that was stuck didn't we? i forget which one it was we were tearing down now yeah. hold that side of the crank for me okay well what i'm trying to do is keep the keep the crank from there it goes there we go man you can let it, it's fine. We're going to be boring the cases anyway. Oh, it was certainly something. Yes, it definitely had a sump full. Yeah, so the, uh, obviously, rod shouldn't be able to do that. Not only is it stuck on the crank, each rod is stuck to each other. So uh, I think this is going to be, you know, be the culprit here. And uh, he also had a he had a lifter explode, as he said. Um, but I, I don't see any I don't see anything in here that would be an indication of an exploded lifter. I need to go back through his parts that his box of parts that came to us. And uh, so what I'll do, I've got a whole bunch of more engine teardowns to do, guys. I think again, I got 13 or 14 more to do, and we're going to be doing those over the next several days. And we're going to try to upload a video a day. 
So be sure to subscribe and hit the reminder bell and you'll be able to catch them. And uh, I'm when I do the next video, I'm going to go back through his, uh, his box of parts and continue with the saga and see what I find for lifters and cam plate and things like that to let you guys see that and any of the problems with the rockers and stuff. But yeah, we definitely, you know, Rod shouldn't be able to do that. <laughs> so guys, uh, thanks. Whoa. Guys, thanks a million for joining me on this endeavor. We've got a long way to go. And so we'll see you again in a couple of days. Take care of yourselves and each other. Have a good one.